So in the last video, we took CC to the track and tried out our new onboard air boost control. You guys had questions, so in this video, I'm going to go over all the parts I used and talk a little bit about why I used them, where I got them, and how much everything cost. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in the last video, uh, you could tell I was pretty damn happy with the new onboard air setup. And before I even made that video, I'd been making posts on social media, showing my progress, putting everything together, you know, getting everything working. And a lot of you guys were asking me questions about the parts I used and how much I paid for them, stuff like that. So I figured I'd just kind of throw this video together and just kind of go over everything show you you know what i used uh why i used it and maybe even give you some different options on stuff if you want to save even more money than i did or if you just maybe needed a larger tank or maybe you didn't you know want to want to run as big of a pump things like that so we'll just go ahead and start in the back guys so here's my setup and you can tell it's it doesn't take up much space at all and i'm gonna go into that here in just a second but basically what we got going on here is there is a company called vixen air horns and they sell on ebay they also have you know their own website and everything but they sell all kinds of onboard air setups for everything from air horns to uh you know suspension air suspension airlift that type of thing and in case you guys don't know you know most of these smaller kits that you see people use are actually they're actually for air horns uh, at some point, somebody come along and said, hey, we can use this for boost control, and, you know, the rest is history. But anyway, I was doing a lot of research on this before I ordered anything, and, you know, guys, I've been looking at this stuff for months and months. A lot of you guys were trying to get me to do CO2. Uh, a lot of peop other people were trying to get me to do onboard air, and I was just kind of decided deciding what I wanted to do. So I ended up going with onboard air kind of for the same reason people go with a turbo instead of nitrous um i didn't want to have to worry about filling bottles i didn't want to have to worry about bringing an extra bottle to the track in case the bottle that was in there went empty or having to go home early because i spring a leak the bottle empties out and i don't have any way to fill it back up and don't have a spare bottle uh, a lot of people will tell you they go with the onboard air because you can fill up your tires too. And yeah, that's a bonus, but that's that's not why I did it, guys. I basically chose onboard air over CO2 just for convenience. Because once it's set up, you don't have to worry about anything after that. You set it up, you set your line pressure, you know, it fills up the tank on its own. You don't ever have to worry about an empty tank or anything like that. And it's nothing against CO2, guys. CO2 is a, a great setup too. As a matter of fact, when I was putting this together, I had in the back of my mind, everything from the tank up uh, is the exact same as if you were using CO2. So I had it in the back of my mind. I was like, you know, if, if I don't like the onboard air, if it doesn't work out, I'll just mount the onboard air setup on my car hauler, on my trailer, and use it to air up tires or, you know, blow, blow parts off or do whatever. And, you know, all I'd have to do to change over to CO2 at this point is get a different regulator and a co2 bottle and hook it up to my line and and boom i'm you know i'm on co2 instead of onboard air so i had that in the back of my head but after our first track day with the onboard air yeah that's that idea is gone i love it i love it guys so the biggest thing for me is i was noticing that some people that had the smaller one gallon tanks were having some issues where, where maybe their pump was kicking on mid-run or you know their pump was going all the time and i kind of tried to sit down and figure out why that was happening to them before i decided what i wanted to go with and there's two things you have to think about here guys one is the capacity of the tank one gallon technically should be plenty if it's regulated high enough and what i mean by that is most of the one gallon systems are only regulated to 105 psi in the tank so if you've only got a one gallon tank and it's only holding 100 pounds of pressure, and you've got your line pressure set at like 80 or 100 pounds, that tank is not gonna last long. And I think that's kind of the source of the problem for a lot of these guys. From all the research I did, what I come to find out is most people recommend setting your line pressure 
at, at least double the amount of dome pressure that you expect to run, like the maximum amount of dome pressure you expect to run. So setting a lower line pressure and increasing the pressure in the tank, uh, I thought maybe between those two things, it would keep me from having my compressor kicking on all the time. And it seems like I was right. The system I went with is actually regulated to hold 150 pounds in the tank. And then I have my line pressure set at 60 PSI. And I did four full runs. The pressure in the tank had just dropped down to like 130 pounds, I think, after four passes, guys. So four passes on the tank and hadn't had to turn the compressor on at all. So there is a switch that kicks it on at 120 and then shuts it back off at 150. So what I did on my, my final pass in the last video, uh, the, ta the compressor still had not kicked on yet. I had, I think, 135 pounds in the tank left. And I started thinking to myself, I was like, well, it'll probably go another run before it kicks on, but I don't want this thing kicking on mid-pass and scaring me or something, you know, like just, I don't know guys, like odd noises scare me <laughs> in the middle of a pass and are likely to make me lift. So uh, what I did is I just went ahead and I hit my little pop-off valve here and bled some pressure off to let it go ahead and kick on before the, uh, the fifth pass and fill back up. But uh, yeah, so the guy who was asking me about how long the tank lasts, uh, freaking a while, dude, it lasts a while. Something else that possibly helps too is I don't do my burnouts with the boost control on. Uh, I just do my burnout on gate pressure. Uh, gate pressure on this car is about three pounds of boost. It's more than enough to do a burnout. I don't see any point in doing a burnout with my boost control on. I think it's just, it's just harder on the motor. It's harder on everything. It creates more heat because all that boost, uh, I mean, it's, it's pointless. So if you don't need the extra power to do your burnout. I highly suggest doing what I do and doing your burnout, having you a switch to turn the boost control on and off, do your burnout on your gate pressure. And then as soon as your burnout's over, you know, flip your switch and turn your boost control on and go to stage. That way you're, you're not wasting any air out of your tank. Uh, you're not causing excess heat because you're in the damn burnout box making 20 pounds of boost. It's kind of ridiculous if you ask me so that's my suggestion and i think that's most likely why uh, you know this tank lasted for four runs i'm sure it would have went five before the compressor kicked on i just went ahead and let it fill back up just in case now when i wired this up you guys who've been following this build know i actually have a whole fuse and relay box mounted right back here inside you know right above my uh my battery so there was already a fuse and relay with 10 gauge wire that had previously went to my nitrous bottle warmer back when this car was on the bottle. So basically all I did was ran those wires to the compressor um, and, you know, put a new label on the relay that instead of saying bottle warmer now it, it says onboard air. But uh, that was pretty simple. Uh, another question I had was how much draw does this put on the electrical system? Now this compressor has a max 23 amp draw, but that's when it first kicks on, guys. Uh, it, it really doesn't pull down hard at all. As a matter of fact, when I was setting up all my PIDs, um, you know, I didn't even have the car running, and this I probably had to run this compressor about, I don't know, six or seven times, just filling it up as I was, you know, testing, hitting the button and, and testing my PIDs and then making changes and testing and uh, it barely even put a dent in the battery. I think the battery started off at like 12.8 for the voltage and even after running this compressor, you know, to keep the tank full, like a bunch of times, uh, the battery was still above 12 volts. It was like 12 one or something. So don't worry about that dragging you down. Uh, that, that compressor is not putting that big of a load on the charging system, guys. I know this video is kind of scattered and I'm kind of explaining things as I go, but let's just, let's go ahead and get the parts out of the way and explain to you what I used. So, um, again, we used Vixen air horns, you know, for the, uh, the compressor and the tank. Now I went with a 1.5 gallon tank and my idea here was I wanted the biggest tank I could fit in the space I wanted to put it in. So... You know, you can see 
I've got just enough space to run my, my hose from the compressor to loop it without it kinking or anything. It fits really nice down in this recess. You know, so I still got room. I can I can pile stuff in here like my helmet and my racing suit and you know whatever else I need to pile back here. But um, so 1.5 gallon tank. The tank is rated to hold up to 200 psi, and I have thought about possibly you know increasing and getting a switch that uh, that shuts off at 175 instead of 150, uh, just to give me even more volume in that tank. Now the compressor I went with is actually a step above what normally would come with this tank. Uh, this is a 1.7, yeah, this is a 1.7 CFM tank, uh, or I'm sorry, compressor. The compressor that would normally come with this tank is like, I think a 1.5 CFM compressor. Uh, this is a little bit larger and this is actually a compressor that they also offer all the way up to with a five gallon tank. So my theory behind that is, you know, this compressor should fill this little 1.5 gallon tank really fast and I was right about that too. So from dead empty, uh, this compressor will fill this tank in a little under three minutes to 150 PSI. Now from there, once it drops down to 120, it only takes it about 30 or 40 seconds to top it back off to 150 and kick back off. So that's not bad at all, guys. I mean, you know, 30 seconds of run time to top it off, like what, once a night <laughs> at, the, at the track. Now, as I said, Vixen does offer, you know, you can buy all these components separate or they offer them in kits. I'm gonna post an eBay link in the video description so <laughs> if you guys don't know how an eBay search link works, basically I'm going to do like a descriptive link and that's going to send you to eBay and it's going to pull up a bunch of different kits from Vixen and you can just go by what I'm telling you here if you want to get the exact same stuff I got or, you know, you can look at some of the other kits and see if one suits you better. You know, if you're doing like a air ride type setup, you might want to get a five gallon tank and two of these compressors. I don't know. I will say one thing though. They did have a compressor one step above this one and I believe it was a 1.9 uh, CFM compressor. I almost bought that one, but number one, it was, when I read the dimensions, it was bigger around. I don't think I could have fit it right where I have this one. And number two, it had some bad reviews about being DOA. Like several people had said that the compressor was either DOA when they got it or, you know, it, it didn't work very long before it burned itself up. So that's why I decided to go with this one. This one had good reviews and uh, that's what I got. Now, moving right along, I used an old air compressor regulator that I had laying around here. And guys, this thing is probably 20, maybe 25 years old. Uh, I will say this, I'm going to get a different regulator, probably nothing any different. Uh, I'll probably get one just like this that, you know, has the little air separator and everything under it. Uh, but this regulator has an issue. The adjustment won't lock back down. And for some reason, it's like every time I fill this thing up from dead empty, I have to slightly adjust this to get it dead back on 60. So. Yeah, probably just need to get a new regulator. I will do that in the future. Now, from here to the front of the car, most people run push lock. You guys know I love my nitrous. I've got all kinds of nitrous kits laying around, and I had this old ZX-4 nitrous line. I decided to just run the Dash 4 nitrous line to the front of the car instead of push lock, just for the simple fact that I thought it would be more durable. Uh, less likely to get a leak that I have to diagnose later. So I run it in. It's actually inside the car, not outside. It goes under the carpet, all that jazz. Uh, comes out just like when we had nitrous on the car before. I followed the same route uh, that my nitrous line had followed before. So it comes up here and we have a pair of three port Mac valves. Now you gotta connect these guys together with a T and you know, here's a kind of funny situation because I could not find a male, male, uh, female T anywhere. The only place I could find it was Motion Raceworks. So Motion Raceworks sells this bracket 
and it comes with the T to tie your your two uh, Mac valves together and it's like 30 bucks guys I mean it's actually a really good deal because it you know it comes with everything you need to tie this stuff together and to mount it so we got that going on and of course I had plenty of these you know different push lock fittings and hoses that I ordered in bulk off eBay a long time ago so from here we've got our push lock line it goes down goes to the middle here I've got a Y so one line goes out to that wastegate the other line comes back to the top of this wastegate then also in this wastegate we have a low dollar motorsports 100 psi pressure transducer and we use the low dollar motorsports pre-wired harness here that he sells for like six dollars for I think it's like a 10 foot harness uh, for all his pressure transducers things like that and we did have to tap the top of this uh, gate these are cheap speed daddy gates so they didn't have enough ports uh, for me to run this you do not want to tee off with your line you you want the uh, the pressure transducer to be you know in its own port there so we just drilled and tapped the top of this wastegate hat for 18 MPT and that's it guys I mean hardware wise that's pretty much the whole setup now we can talk about how much all this costs and let's see I should probably honestly I've not figured this up really I think it was around 400 um, now I do want to say the motion raceworks bracket and one of the solenoids uh, I actually got from my buddy Phil he wasn't using them because he went with the the holly you know the holly uh, boost valve deal so he had already bought this and then he got a deal on the holly setup so he ended up selling me this stuff for you know a little bit cheaper but uh when i'm figuring up this price in a second i'm just going to figure full price for this stuff okay that way you know what this would cost you if you just bought everything new and i do want to say the other mac valve i actually got from uh, low dollar motorsports it was like 36 dollars, i think now i gotta say this guys you can buy these three port mac valves on ebay from sketchy sellers for about 15 or 20 bucks a piece they are knockoffs they're not genuine mac valves but they look just like these and you know after reading around on yellow bullet and a few other forums uh turns out those you know those knockoff mac valves end up giving people fits so my suggestion is it's only a 10 or $15 difference between a knockoff and a genuine one that you can buy from either low dollar motorsports or uh, Motion Raceworks when you buy this bracket uh, Guys just just spend the extra ten fifteen dollars each so extra thirty dollars and get your pair of you know Genuine Mac bows, you know, it's just one less issue. You're gonna have to worry about you guys know I like my knockoff parts and you know, there's a lot of knockoff parts on this car, but you know something like a mac valve you know you could just be running in circles all day trying to figure out why you can't can't get your boost control set up right and then just come to find out it's because you got a piece of shit you know knock off mac valve so just spend the money guys you know some stuff you should just spend the money on one last thing i did want to touch on too is viair so viair is probably the most popular company to do an onboard air setup with but guys they're expensive okay so uh, I'm, I'm going to give you some options for different kits here in just a second, but I will just say the one gallon, like the bottom of the line Viair kit, I think it's called the Viair 10,000 or T10,000 or something like that. It comes with a one gallon tank. It comes with one of their bottom of the line pumps or compressors, and uh, that thing's like 200 bucks, okay, for that setup, which is... The same price we paid for this setup with a 1.5 gallon tank that's rated at 200 psi the Viair one gallon is only rated at like 150 and it only runs at 105 pounds so that's why i think a lot of people have you know have issues with that just because of the low pressure uh, i'm not saying you can't make it work i'm just saying if you've got a one gallon tank that only holds 105 pounds of pressure and you're regulating your line pressure to say 80 pounds you're going to empty that tank pretty damn fast so um you know i got this set up with a larger tank that holds more 
volume, you know, as far as air pressure and everything. And a pump, uh, I think the Vi air pump is either 1.2 or 1.5 cubic feet per minute of air. And this one's 1 1.7. And I paid the same price for this setup as for the bottom of the line Vi air setup. So just something to think about. Um, I, I really don't think there's a whole lot of difference in quality between the two. So, you know, you do you. <laughs> if you want Vire, by all means, get Vire. I'm just here to let you know that, you know, you can get a lot better for a lot cheaper. Or you can get a knockoff brand uh, on eBay right now that's identical to the Vire uh, 1, 000, or 10,000 setup for $90 shipped. So we'll talk about that here in just a second. So let's just figure this up. We had our our sensor, which was, you know, the, the low dollar motorsport sensor. It was $69. And it actually comes with, you don't have to buy the harness I did because the sensor comes with the connectors and everything, and you can just make your own harness. If you want, if you want the sensor harness. Um, it's just six dollars add it to your order and it just you know makes things a little nicer a little faster um, you're gonna need your Mac valves so your your uh, three ports and those are thirty six dollars each times two they're thirty six dollars each from uh, from low dollar all this you can get from low dollar Sorry guys, having trouble riding. All right, uh, next you need your little T and your bracket. Now low dollar makes a push lock T. So if you wanna run push lock all the way from the back of the car up to the front, um, low dollar has a push lock T. Uh, I'm trying to remember how much it was. I think, I think it was just like eight or $10. I looked at it, but I decided I wanted to do the nitrous line, so that's why I didn't get the you know the push lock T. I wanted the I wanted the T that would let me screw a fitting in it for dash four. But I'm going to put that up there because most of the people doing this, uh, you know, they they're probably just going to use a push lock from the back of the car to the front. I mean, that's the cheapest, easiest way to do it. Okay, then you need your uh, well, if you do if you do that, you can skip the bracket for Motion Raceworks altogether. Uh, so that bracket was thirty dollars, but I'm not putting it up here because you know you could do this for ten bucks. But just keep in mind, you know, if you want to do the Motion Raceworks thing, that's you know that's thirty bucks. So anyway, so then the onboard air, you know, the actual compressor and tank. Well, let's do this on board a on board air uh that was 195 dollars shipped and that's from again from vixen on ebay and i will put a link to that in the video description i'll try to put a link for all this stuff in the video description guys uh, i just got to remember to do it i'm kind of scatterbrained right now you guys know i haven't been making videos for a while so all right, and then you need a regulator. So I will put a link, a regulator search link, regulator, or er, fuck, I don't even know how to spell it. Um, but dude, less than $20, guys. Less than $20, okay, on eBay. Just go on there, grab you an air compressor regulator, and it needs to be a quarter inch quarter inch NPT fittings and there's actually one on there well there's several on there that come with quarter inch NPT fittings so there you go and then I will just so this is what I had in it minus the regulator but I'm fixing to buy one of these regulators so so you add all that up which I just did with a calculator through the magic of uh, video editing and that is three hundred and seventy two dollars for this entire onboard air setup, guys. Uh, hell of a deal, Re really good deal. Now, something I didn't put up here was all the miscellaneous push lock fittings and lines. I, I mean, honestly, guys, shop on eBay. Uh, you're, you're looking at getting all the push lock fittings you need for probably, 
you know, twenty more dollars, and you can get a shit ton of the nylon quarter inch line uh, for like fifteen dollars on there. So then we're at seven. We're at four hundred and seven dollars. Okay, so even buying all the push lock stuff. Uh, we're gonna call it $407, so we're gonna call this a $400 setup. So real quick, I told you I was gonna give you a few different options uh, for some cheaper setups. So on eBay, there's a company called, I think it's like CarTech or something like that, and they make two different kits, guys. So they make a kit that is basically a clone of the Viair 10,000 kit. It comes with a one gallon tank, I think like a, either a 1.2 or 1.5 CFM compressor and you know all the little fittings and stuff that screw into the tank and it's like uh, $92. If you compare that to the Viair kit for you know like $190 to $200 I mean that's a hell of a deal. Don't know how good the compressor is on it but it seems to have some pretty decent reviews. So that same company also has a kit that comes with a compressor that's closer to the output of my compressor and a two and a half gallon tank and it's only $144 shipped and again it comes with like the pop-off valve and you know the on-off pressure switch all that jazz for less than $150 now I like I had to go back and forth because I was like do I really want to spend 200 for a 1.5 gallon tank with this Vixen setup or you know, spend less money and get a bigger tank, like almost double the size um, with that kit. And ultimately the only thing that made that decision for me was space. That 2.5 gallon tank was gonna be a little bit too long and a little bit too wide to fit in the space I wanted to put it in. And I didn't wanna put it anywhere else, guys. I wanted to put it right in that drop off where you saw it. But, uh, you know, just get on eBay. There's, there's a lot of different options. And like I said, even with Vixen, um, they have a lot of different options. You can even buy the parts separate. So if you want to buy a little compressor and a big tank or a big tank and a little compressor, you know, there you go. This car last year was just really, really violent leaving and it's because I didn't have a whole lot of control over the boost. We were just using the four port Mac valve and, and the boost was just going crazy everywhere. Uh, with this setup, I can literally, it, like I can just make this thing baby smooth building boost and and i love it it doesn't have to be everything or nothing i, I mean it, it responds really well to the boost ramp that i put in that's that's the only way i can describe it guys it, it literally feels like another a different car and i was actually posting on social media i was like you know a that six one pass feels like a seven five pass used to i mean i, I literally like before the car just felt out of control now it i mean it's like i'm cruising I, I feel like i could just you know if i didn't have to shift the gears i could probably just sip coffee on a five second pass in this thing but that's pretty much it guys that's the whole setup so i had thought about maybe going over actually setting it up in you know in the holly and i might make a separate video for that because if i do that this video is going to run really really freaking long so uh, I may actually sit down, you know, in the next week or so and kind of show you guys on a laptop how to set everything up, how to set up your dome sensor, um, how to use your data log to set up your PIDs for your boost control to get them, you know, get that all smoothed out, um, you know, all that jazz. But I'm not going to do it in this video because it would probably add 20 minutes to a video where I've been rambling anyway. So that's the setup, guys. Uh, again, I will post links in the video description for everything I used, and hopefully that answers all your questions. So thanks for watching. Now get off YouTube, get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage.